I have to admit, I'm one of those people who gets dizzy way too quickly, and sometimes it's not pretty. As a kid, when my friends would go to a carnival and hop on the Tilt-A-Whirl, I'd slyly volunteer to go on a cotton candy run to avoid the hurl that came with the whirl. But there was a time that going round and round at high speed was incredibly cool. Car hobbyists got busy with the Spin Dizzy. In the early days of the automobile, racing the cars was a way to test their capabilities and thrill large crowds at the same time. But most Americans didn't have the means to participate in real auto racing, so they settled for watching much smaller versions of the racers that came to be known as spin dizzies. Spin dizzies are sometimes called cable racers or tether cars. They're little miniature race cars that are powered by single cylinder model airplane engines, and they were raced initially well tethered to a central pole. So they'd go around in a circle and you would time them with a clock, hence the name tether car. To learn more about this cultural phenomena, I met up with the Henry Ford's Curator of Transportation, Matt Anderson. This looks like a pretty snazzy toy display. They do look like toys, but believe it or not, these were used by grown adults, hobbyists who were interested in racing. How fast could they go? Some of these cars could go 100 miles an hour, believe it or not, real miles an hour, not scale. And initially they would run them cabled to that tether, but later they actually built full-size board tracks for these cars. These, not bigger ones. Exactly, this size. And were there great spin dizzy champions? There, there were, in fact, there was an organization that established rules, that kept records, that organized official competitions for these cars. And yeah, you could be national champion with tether cars. Oh my goodness. If you wanted one, did you order a kit? It came in the mail and you built it with instructions or what? These were so popular, you could get almost any variety you wanted. If you didn't know much about putting them together, you could buy a completely assembled kit. You could buy the pieces that you could then put together and some builders built their own from scratch. Were they expensive? They could be. By the time you got your kit, your engine, and your accessories, you could be looking at $100. You know, This is at a time you could buy a real brand new car for $500. What years were these popular? They were at their peak popularity from the 1930s really into the mid-1950s. And uh, by that point, they had started going so fast that it really became hard to, to watch them and, and enjoy them, frankly. Oh, They're just a blur going just around blur. in a circle. So right. ironically, their success in speed was a, sort of a detriment to the hobby overall. Was the object to build one that could go really fast or to build one that was just stunning to look at? Generally, a lot of the hobbyists were, were in pursuit of speed, so they started to shape the bodies to look like teardrops to the point where they really didn't resemble real cars anymore. But there were always some builders who were most interested in authenticity. They wanted to make that car look as much like a real race car as they could. Today, spin dizzies are highly prized by collectors for their beauty and craftsmanship, and can be worth thousands of dollars each. Spin dizzy. Should I use that for my hip-hop name? I love it, I think you should.